Hello everybody, it is Lock here, and today I am really happy because we are playing the Kragenwick Cremator deck. This is a really aggressive red-green with a white slash in the sideboard, Eldritch Evolution deck, which is aiming to curve out, then slam this at the top of the curve, discarding either an impervious Great Worm or a Galta Primal Hunger to hopefully hit our opponent in the face for 16 damage. This seems to me like the most spectacular way possible to win a game of Magic the Gathering, so I can't wait to jump into some matches. But breaking down the shell very quickly, we've got an aggressive green deck, right? So I've got a bit of fast mana, then we've got Strangle Root Geist, Steel Leaf Champion, just to beat the opponent down as best as possible. We then also get a little bit of aggressive top end with Surek the Hunt Caller as well, not forgetting that our Cremator is indeed a 5-4-2, so he's got to get in the beats on. We then get a few tutor targets from the Eldritch Evolutions, which are Tyler's Tracker for some grindiness, Magus the Moon to shut somebody out of the game in another pretty cheesy way, and Scavenging Ooze for the Graveyards, as well as Nullhide Ferrex, because he's kinda hard to deal with and he ends games quickly. To make our plan more consistent, at least the Cremator plan, that is, we get Fauna Shaman as a 2 of. Really, really sweet addition to the deck. Also really good at getting rid of Great Worms and Galters, which are uncastable and stranded in your hand, because that is a potential problem with the deck. So in the sideboard, we've got a little bit of everything, including a White Splash. So we get cards like Eidolon of Rhetoric, Damping Sphere, and some Graveyard Hate to help us deal with some combo decks in the format. We get a Cavern of Souls to help us deal with Counter Magic. We get some anti-aggro cards like this Wall of Reverence, this Slag Storm, this Caldera Hellion, which is of course really good with Eldritch Evolution and Kitchen Finks, likewise very good in that spot. And then we also get a little bit of uh, land and artifact hate thrown in there as well, just to give us options against basically everything that's happening in this format. So I'm excited. If all else fails, we've got an aggressive shell which can bolt and just hit people out of the game with hasty green creatures. So let's jump into some matches and see if we can uh, 16 some people. Alright, so on the play with Kragenwick Cremator, and I don't think we can keep a hand like this. Nothing but mana and a single bolt. Ooh, and this is a really dicey 6 too. I'm gonna keep this one, I suppose, and just uh, look for lands. I don't want to go to 5. Okay, that's a forest, so we'll keep that. One nice thing about Eldritch Evolution is there is a world in which you just get to play, like, a turn 3 tracker evolution at the next turn to grab a Magus of the Moon and just win the game. Island Ceramisions for the opponent. And unfortunately we have no turn two play. So if this is a control deck, they will have plenty of counter magic for us by the time we get to start casting creatures. Forest go. Okay, it's Storm. So I don't think we're winning game one against Storm anyways. We do have some nice stuff in the sideboard for the matchup though. I guess I'm gonna keep playing out my stuff. Right, the opponent's got red mana here and I'm not going to F6 through this. We're probably dead. I'm not going to make you guys sit through it. We'll just uh, let them storm off until we are confirmed dead. All right, so there's a Gifts Ungiven, and the opponent is going to Grape Shot. Ugh. I was going to say we had one path to victory here, which would be if we got to untap, we could evolution away our tracker and hope to uh, shoot our opponent in the face with this Great Worm and a Cremator. But we've just lost that out which means I'm pretty sure we're just dead right now, and we know we're dead next turn because the opponent has uh, Parson Flames, which they can cast for two mana. They've got Rituals in the Graveyard, Mana Morphos, Grape Shot, so we're definitely dead on our turn, and we can't do anything here. So we're going to game number two. I think we're always losing game one to Storm no matter what we do, so that's okay. Alrighty, so for Storm we do get a decent sideboard. I'm just gonna try to be as aggressive as possible and keep in all of my disruption. So we get to Damping Sphere and Eidolon of Rhetoric are the big ones. Then we also get some Graveyard Hate with Scavenging Ooze and the better Relics of Progenitus. So I'll bring all these in. I'm bringing out the Trackers, Magus the Moon, they seem pretty bad here. Ferox just seems like its um, abilities are not that relevant and Galta is by far uh, the weaker of our targets for Cremator. So hopefully with a setup like this, we can uh, get what we need to get done. All right, this is a pretty solid opening hand. We get some disruption in the form of both Lightning Bolt and Relic. We get some pressure with our Steel Leaf Champion, a bit of acceleration too. So we've got a shot. So we'll lead off with our Noble. Okay, there's a Cremator, could be good later. For now, I'm just gonna get a basic forest, run out my turn two Steel Leaf Champion, which can get in for six a turn. 
opponent, of course, have nothing in their graveyard yet, so we'll get to Relic and potentially bolt a creature that they can play next turn. Alright, the opponent doesn't have a Dork to play, so that's interesting. Oh, Surak. That's kind of tempting. So if I played Surak, he could give himself haste and I could get him for 10 this turn, which seems really sweet, right? But I do think I really need to leave up this Lightning Bolt. And I don't want to get wrecked by a remand here, so I think I'm just going to stick to the original plan of Relic plus Bolt. Okay, so the Steel Leaf's going to get in for 6 here, and I'll get to Relic. Oh, but it's going to Mana Morphos in response. That is interesting. And it's a remand, so yeah, we would have gotten wrecked if we played out our Serac there. So we'll play out Relic, we'll shock so that we have the uh, Relic's Exile ability as well as Bolt Up. Of course, going to keep attacking the opponent's graveyard when I can. Okay, and the opponent looks to just be passing back to us. I don't want to bolt their face aggressively here. Okay, Foothills is pretty nice. So I'm going to go ahead and fetch here. Let's grab another forest. And it's Surak Hunt Caller time, I think. Okay, so beginning of combat, Surak triggers with Formidable active. He does get haste. Which means we get to connect for 10 here. So if our opponent does any damage to themselves, we can bolt them for lethal. Otherwise, we've got this relic going. So we get to activate relic again here, then pass to our opponent, and they of course need to make something happen. I'm kind of expecting them to go ritual into gifts here and try to kill us next turn. We'll wait and see though. Yeah, there's the ritual. And gifts, yep. Okay, so it's an interesting gifts pile here. So the opponent's got a couple of mana creatures, Ritual, Noxious, Revival. I kind of want them to cast this Noxious Revival, right? Because then that gets them down to two life and I can kill them in response to a mana creature maybe. So yeah, I'm going to bin the Ritual and the and the Baral. Yeah, so I'll do it like that. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and Noxious Revival here. I'm just going to bolt them in response and that should win us the uh, game number two here. Yeah, sweet. So... That's nice, nothing cheesy happened there, but we did just win a nice, aggressive, fair game of magic. The question is, can we do that on the draw against Storm? All right, so we're back for game number three here. I feel like we need some heavy hitters, and this hand's definitely a keep, because this is a potential turn two Eidolon of Rhetoric hand, which is the kind of hate card we need if we're ever gonna keep up with Storm. Downside, of course, is that we can't actually cast Steel Leaf after we Eidolon with this hand, because we'd have to sacrifice our uh, one of our green sources. Okay, Strangleroot Geist. So Noble Hierarch is a pretty easy turn one play. Okay, and there's a Serum Visions on the opponent's part, so they're not playing a Dork. Now, what I'd really like to do here is uh, get away with playing a Threat on turn two. Yeah, two bolts, two... Yeah, the Temptation's too strong. Eldritch Ab and, and I can keep a second green source here if I play the Geist out, so... I'm pretty sure I'm just going to hold up Bolt, which means I'm probably not going to die if they don't have a mana creature. And then just Geist here, play out my Mountain, get in for two, and that means next turn I can Evolution into my Eidolon of Rhetoric. But sacrificing the Geist and keeping my valuable green source, which means I can play my Steel Leaf later. Okay, so the opponent's passing to us. So I'm just going to go ahead and bolt them and step to keep the pressure up because I've got a backup bolt in hand anyway. Impervious Great Worm, huh? Yeah, I'm not on that plan right now. Alright, so I'm going to Cavern, I'm going to name Elf so that I can cast my Elf Knight. Go to Combat, get in for 3 with my Geist. And the opponent's down to 11. Oh, I should have done this before Combat, right? Because then I get this Geist back a point bigger. So yeah, that's, that's technically a mistake. But we'll see what happens now. All right, no remand, that's sweet. So now I get to go ahead and Eidolon of Rhetoric and just hope that that's enough. Okay, opponent had no end step play. So they're probably going for that Ritual Gifts play, but of course they can't do that with an Eidolon play. That's an Electromance for turn, so that's not very scary. I think I'm still supposed to bolt it end a turn, because that clears the way for my Strangleroot guys to deal some damage. And yeah, the opponent scoops it up, can't beat the Eidolon of Rhetoric, and that means that playing a just fair Eldritch Evolution game plan, no, uh, no giant Kraken Rite Cremator hits involved. We get to 2-1 Storm, so that's a really sweet way to get things going with Kraken Rite Cremator. Okie dokie, so playing some Kragenwick Cremator here, and this is a hand which unfortunately doesn't really work. Doesn't really do anything, can't cast the Steel Leafs, can't cast anything, so we're gonna mulligan. Okay, and this hand's a little spicy, but we're gonna keep it. 
And I suppose I want to be casting my cremators, so I'll keep a third land and just lead off on the turn one birds. Ah, this is annoying. So your opponent's leading off on a flooded strand, so probably playing blue white control. I say that's annoying because we don't actually have a turn two play. Unless I wanted to give up my birds, which I don't. Also a bit sad here is that without anything big in our hand, these Kraken Cremators look really sad because we have to discard a card when they come into play. So it's just card disadvantage against the control deck. Okay, that's a Wall of Omens, so at least we can resolve something. I'd much rather draw something other than the Cremator to resolve here though, but we don't. Alright, well I guess it's Cremator time and I kinda want to discard my land because everything else is kinda somewhat valuable. I suppose the other option there was I could evolution away my bird for a tireless tracker. Okay, and we ended up throwing away the second cremator, so that's okay, we get to deal five to the opponent's face, and we still have that option of getting out a tracker next turn. Okay, that's a field run for the opponent, so no logic nuts to worry about, which is nice. And Cabin of Souls is not bad either. It's gonna get things going by getting in for five here. Okay, and we meet a path. So we'll go ahead and grab a forest there. And now we should hopefully be free to get down a Tyler's Tracker. We'll see what happens. Yeah, okay, that worked. So we'll get a clue. Sadly, no fetch land, but it's still one clue. And we do have the mana to crack it before we untap, although we are losing the tracker. Yeah, I just want more forest at this point. And this is where things get scary, because we have nothing in hand against an opponent with five cards in hand. And we have no pressure on the control player. So we will draw more land, not good, and a hierarch. I suppose I'll play at the hierarch. And my fetch land, which I'll leave uncracked in case I draw a another tracker. And yeah, we do lose our Kessig Wolf run, which is the only thing that made this hierarch relevant. So I think maybe the answer of how we win this game is we have to draw a big guy and a Kragenwick cremator, and then put the cavern on um giant or shaman. So I'm just not gonna play anything. Impervious Great Worm's a good draw then, which means all we want to draw is a Kragenwick cremator at which point we should just win the game. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have any attacks or anything, so I'm just gonna pass the turn. Oh wow, the opponent's actually playing Cavern of Souls on Angel, so they must be playing Lyra or Baneslayer. Okay, and that's a Finx, okay, that's a Bolt. I'm just gonna keep passing the turn. We've got 43 cards left in the deck, and we've got a grand total of three Cremators left. All right, so we're taking three from the Finx. Oh wow, and the opponent's passing to us, which is nice, because they're probably just sitting on counter magic. I have to play at my stumping ground, because I need to be able to empty my hand should I draw the cremator so that I'm guaranteed to Great Worm their face. Huh. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So Restoration Angel. We can't interact with that, so that's going to speed up their clock. Okay, opponent's going in for six. All right, come on, one time, cremator. That's a cavern. Ah, boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'm gonna name human with my first cavern to hopefully throw them off the scent. Still trying to keep my hand empty of things I can't play out in the same turn. Okay, I think it's time to save three points with my hierarchy. Alright, come on, Kraken with Cremator. Okay, Strangle Root Geist. I guess I'm playing it? Hmm. Maybe I'm supposed to name Worm there? I'm technically very close to casting this guy, but I don't think that actually matters because he doesn't have trample. So the opponent can just uh, chump it and race me if I go for that plan. Oh boy. Snap custom age two. All right, so snap's gonna happen. I have to try and bolt the snap here, which I guess I do in my opponent's upkeep, because if this doesn't work, I'm just dead. All right, so snap cast it down. So we've got one more draw here. There's a wall of omens. As we go down to two. All right, let's crack this misty end of turn. Grab this temple garden out of our deck. It's a little more thinning. Final shot, crack with cremator. Now, nah. all right, well, it didn't happen this time, but we have two more games to try and win, so let's see how that goes. All right, so for sideboarding, I kind of want to keep everything together. I've been contemplating if I want Relic or not. I think I'd rather just keep Scavenging Ooze. They don't have a lot in their graveyard, just um, some things like the uh, Finxes coming back and Snapcasters, so I think just having Scooze is fine. I'm going to bring in a cavern for my Temple Garden and run it back like this. All right, this hand's sweet. I'm going to keep this. This hand has the potential to dome my opponent for 16, so that's always, uh, always a good start. As we're gonna get things going with a Noble Hierarch. Okay, there's a Forest. So I'll play out the Forest, attack with my Noble Hierarch. Opponent's down to 19, we'll play out the Birds, and just ship the turn. Opponent's gonna opt end step, they are down to 16, which is a really nice life total for me. Alright, and just a Wall of Omens, okay, okay, okay. Looking good so far. Tireless Tracker, eh? Hmm, 
I mean, that card's really good. I guess I'm playing it. I suppose I can plan to um, potentially have this anytime if I have my cavern going. It's a bit vulnerable to Field of Ruin, but it's probably better to be drawing cards than not. I'm just going to name Shaman with my cavern. Get myself a clue and then just pass the turn. Good thing as well about playing Tire Striker out here is that it will mean that Serac's formidable ability will trigger next turn. Because between the two of them I'll have more than 8 power in play. So yeah, I'm going to crack the clue here. Alright, find another land. Okay, and they're going to draw step path us. Fair enough. Just grab a forest. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and empty my hand of everything other than my combo. And yes, Serac resolves. Sweet. So, opponent's got one turn to find something because right now they're looking to be in a lot of trouble. We have enough mana to cast anything that we draw right now. Okay, that's a Snapcaster, which... Does that get Path or Opt? Path to Exile on Serac? Sure. Yeah, I'll search up a land. Sure, sounds good to me. Oh, I think we're gonna do it. I think we're gonna do it. Yeah, Noble Herrick, we can play that out. Here we go, here we go. All right, let's make the Shaman uncounterable. And 16 you? Alrighty, finally, there we go. <laughs> uncounterable 16 damage to the face. And that, that is a good way to win. Let's hope we can do it again for game three. Alrighty, so for game number three here, I am not happy with this hand, but I guess I'm keeping it. It's fine. Scavenging Ooze, I think, is probably pretty reasonable. Steely Champion seems good. Strangled Geist is a better turn to play than the other guys, so that's good. And I've actually got a ton of red sources in hand, so even though I'm leading on this fetch, I'm probably just getting a basic forest in case I draw my Magus of the Moon. So yeah, I'll just do that. Yeah, drawing a foothills, I'll just get another basic forest as well. And see if my Geist resolves. Yeah, okay, it does. And it connects too, so that's nice. Okay, Kitchen Finks for the opponent. Pretty good at blocking a Strangle Root Geist. Hierarch is the draw, okay. Well, I'm going to play out my Steel Leaf, because it's really good on this board. I don't really want to give my opponent free points of life, so... I'm just going to go ahead and pass the turn. Hopefully... We can uh, stick our Scavenging Ooze before we kill their Fink so that it doesn't come back. Okay, it's back to us. So I'm just going to lead on the Scavenging Ooze. In case he's got a Restoration Angel, I kind of want to leave up both Bolt and a Scavenging Ooze activation as I go in for my attacks here. Yeah, there's the Resto. But my opponent, um, well, I mean, he's got a good block on the uh, Strangle Root Geist with the Restoration Angel, but he doesn't otherwise have good blocks, and I can always just bolt away the Angel too. And of course, if he blocks with the Finks, that is really good for me. Okay, yeah, just the free block, so it's the right play from the opponent. I will go ahead and bolt the Resto, so bye-bye Resto. And yeah, I'll just play out the Hierarch too. Alright, so we have a really nice board here, but all of our cards are on the table, so I do really want to find something. Ultra Evolution would be sweet. You can see Magus of the Moon would basically end my opponent, even though they're only playing a two-color deck right now. Okay, and they didn't have any plays to make. Ah, I think we're getting Vendillion clicked, yeah. Um, yeah, well... It's not like we have anything going on. Alright, so I'll play our tap land. And I suppose it's just the Steel Leaf that's attacking. If he wants to trade it for both of his creatures, that seems good for me. Yeah, cool. So he makes a double block. So yeah, we get to hit both of his creatures down. In response to his Persist trigger, I get to eat the Kitchen Finks. So that's not going to come back. So just a clean, clean two for one for us. And the Scavenging Ooze is going to get massive. So if our opponent has no removal, we'll be in really good shape here. But of course, a single Path to Exile makes it kind of tricky for me. And uh, Path Snap Path would just end me. So yeah, I'll start eating creatures on the end step. Alright, I guess no path, otherwise it'd probably stop me from getting this life. Oh, and that's a Magus of the Moon too. Oh, that's exciting. Okay, we're getting in for 9 here. Okay, that's a Snapcaster, so he just wants to trade with my Stranglerute Geist, that's okay. Yep, sure. Cool, and now we just get to name Human off of our Cavern of Souls. Cast Magus of the Moon can't be counted, they can get one basic out of their Field of Ruin here. But this cuts them off white, oh they didn't even do it. So they've just got one colored source now. <laughs> so we're playing the fair game, other than the Magus, I suppose. It's a bit of an unfair card. But yeah, that's not the backup plan of always just having a bunch of aggressive creatures in your deck is just great, because you'll just run over people and win. And that is the game. Opponent does not have anything they can cast whatsoever. 
And that is going to be a really nice 2-1 victory for us. Really, really, really nice to see the uh, Krakenwick Cremator win coming in game number two. Sweet, let's keep going. All right, so we're on the play for another round with our Krakenwick Cremator deck. And I suppose this is a keep. This is just a um, very aggressive hand. Haste creatures and lightning bolts. I mean, that's a, you know, tried and true way to win games, right? Burn does it. Our Goblin Guides just cost two mana. Okay, I'll end out of the opponent. I think I'm just gonna bolt face and get aggressive. Try to make the most of my mana, because I could get constrained on mana this game. Okay, Fauna Shaman's interesting. Uh, hopefully Geist resolves. No spell snares, please. Okay, just an opt. Whenever they do it in response, I get so nervous. All right, let's get in for two. Down to 15. Okay, it's a Scalding Tarn. More Geists. Well, we kind of wanted land there, but if we're not gonna draw lands, uh, more really fast cards is uh, pretty good. Okay, and it resolves too. And if the opponent's stuck on red removal in this deck, if it's a blue red deck, that is really nice. Well, even if they have white removal, I kind of like the idea of getting more lands too, so we'll try to bash for four. Yes, yeah, sweet. Bolt taking out half a creature suits me just fine, and they're down to 12. They're gonna opt end step. They topped the card they opted that time, so they must have something decent. All right, Sarah Ambitions. God, I'm really liking the aggressive backup plan of this deck. Maybe the combo is the backup plan. Maybe I'm just thinking about it wrong. In any case, I'm gonna keep Geisting, because we've got a handful of Geists. And that means we get to swing for seven now. And he's just gonna abrade the same guy as before. Makes sense. He goes down to eight. And that's the opponent's turn. All right, well, they're holding up Cryptic Mana. I think I have to get a Stomping Ground, even though they could be a Blood Moon deck, just because I kind of want Double Red as well as Double Green in this deck. Eldritch Evolution ain't bad. Ooh. They're going to counter it, though, right? Like, they are 100% to counter this. So I'm pretty sure I'm just going to go to combat and make them Crypt... Okay, they didn't Cryptic. They're Cleaking. And they're targeting themselves with the Cleak. Okay. Removing Blood Moon from their hand. Makes sense. I think I'm just going to go ahead and... Bolt the clique, right? Yeah, I think I like that. And I am gonna play out the Fauna Shaman. So if they play main deck Anger of the Gods and they have a red source and they have the anger, we're gonna feel very sad and the game's gonna be basically over. But otherwise, we're looking good. We can also Eldritch Evolution to just shoot them in the face for 16 at this point. Yeah, or 12. So if we resolve Eldritch, we win. So I'm gonna go to combat first because if they have Cryptic or Removal, I want them to tap out. Okay, yeah, they have Electrolyze, which is really sweet piece of removal right there. But it doesn't matter because I have something better than Electrolyze, which is sacking my Fauna Shaman, grabbing a Kragenwick Cremator, and doing at least 12 damage to their face. Come on. Beautiful. Minus 10. Ah, oh, this deck is, this deck is fun. This is great. All right, so looking at the sideboarding, I don't think there's much to do. I don't think they're the blue-red tempo deck. I think they're like some sort of um, combo deck, whether it's either just like control with blue moon or maybe like a deck with um, through the breach Emrakul or Kiki Jiki maybe. So, because they're playing cards like Electrolyze and main board blood moon. So I'm kind of keen on any threat which has four toughness, which most of my threats do. Additionally, Strange Lord guys to come back, so they're going against Red Removal. The only things that aren't a Scavenging Ooze and Fauna Shaman, but Scavenging Ooze is really good against Snapcaster Mage. Only card I don't like really is Magus the Moon, because they're a Blood Moon deck and they had so many basics. So I'm just going to bring in a Cavern of Souls and Scavenging Ooze, take out Temple Guard and Magus of the Moon, and just run it back like this. All right, so this hand's a little awkward. I'm going to keep it for sure, because I like pretty much all the cards in it. The only thing I don't like is that we don't have a turn to play. Okay, Cremata could be interesting later, but Hierarch's pretty likely to die, so I kind of need to draw a um, turn to play and land as well. All right, so Hierarch's gonna live. We just need to draw a play here. We don't. All right, that's a bit sad. They almost certainly have counter magic because they shocked in their steam vents, so I'm just going to happily let them not do anything. Yeah, okay, that hurts now. They're gonna roast the Hierarch. Drawing two four drops in a row really, really hurt our chance this game. Okay, Lightning Bolt's not what we wanted either, so we desperately need a land now. Really wanted either a land or a castable creature that turn. So yeah, we saw the very best of the deck in the uh, last game, and we're seeing the very worst of it this game with a bunch of um, clunky and expensive spells if our draws don't pan out the way we want them to. Okay, and that's a thing in the ice, which is also just scary, because I can't really kill it. 
Um, so that's interesting. I know the opponent's got removal, right? Because, oh, sorry, sorry, counter magic, because they've been playing as if they do all game long. So I'm pretty sure I just play whatever I want to get countered the most, which is definitely a Kragenwick Cremator. And I think the opponent has to counter it as a risk that if uh, it does resolve, they might just take 12. Okay, and now it gets a bit awkward. So we really want to discard this Skelter. 20%. Oh, he's got Bolt. Ugh. Maybe I was supposed to Bolt face at the end of last turn? Yeah, there's a real possibility that that's true. And it looks like it's going to be Snapcaster for Roast here. So we're resolving whatever we cast this turn. Hierarch's kind of an annoying draw. Um, I'm pretty sure the card I most want to resolve is my Ferox, because it's awkward for them to deal with. And now we're just hoping that they can't flip their thing in the ice, because this Nullhide Ferox is really going to give them a beating if they don't. Alright, so the opponent's got a lot of untapped mana right about now. Very, very conscious of that. Even so, I think... I think I'm playing out my Surak right now. I mean, it's a hasty creature and it's what I want to cast this turn. Would feel very weird to cast a haste creature post combat, but maybe I'm supposed to do that? Not oh, resolves, okay, so that works out. Okay, no cryptics. So I do get to attack. I do have the potential 12 of them in hand right now. Maybe they just don't have anything. Yeah, they're just gonna chump the Ferrex take five. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, no instant play, wow. Wow, so the opponent just has nothing. So even though I've had a really clunky start, we're looking to be in good shape here. They do have a very reasonable chance of flipping thing potentially off that opt. Although yeah, it looks like the opponent's just flooding out too much. So the opponent's just fetched and it looks like, okay, Snapcaster. Huh, so they must be going for opt and hoping to opt into another castable spell because they took a long time to make that play. So if they had the flip in hand, they surely would have done it. And whether they find a castable instant or sorcery here is really important to who wins this game. Oh, they topped. So they must have it. Yeah, it's an anger of the gods. Okay, opponent's getting for seven. Opponent does have a Snapcaster Mage in hand too, which makes this kind of awkward. I guess it's just Noble Hierarch plus Ferox here? If they go Snap Anger, at least they kill their own Snap. Hoping to chump with Noble Hierarch here. And we can do a lot of damage in the backswing. Mm. Okay, that was really sad. Them having a bolt there is really sad because we know they have the snap, so we have to block our dead to snap bolt. Oh no. Drawing that second cremator is really scary. Okay, I think that means I play Noble Hierarch here, and then I just play cremator for turn. Because this is a 1 in 3 chance to win us the game, and if it doesn't, we should then have a blocker. Okay, Logic Nut, that's scary. In fact, we're dead, the opponent has snap bolt. They didn't do it. Huh. Okay, well I guess if they have another bolt, we're dead anyway. Yeah, so we're going to two. We know the opponent has a snap caster. And there it is. Okay, so that was interesting. I think the opponent drew pretty well at the end, because obviously they didn't have the cards to flip their thing. They managed to chain the uh opt into another spell to flip it. They then obviously drew the logic knot and the second bolt, so all in all. Not bad, given the clunky start we had, and we still have another game to try and win. Okay, so for game three, I'm going to keep this hand. It's very similar to my keep last game. It's almost the same hand. But we did draw very clunkily in the first few turns last time, and if we draw well in the first few turns this time, we could be in good shape, because we saw the power of four toughness against these red decks last time. Come on. Okay, so nothing good off the top. So we'll just pass the turn. And the annoying thing here is that when we miss on a um, castable two, 1, 2, or 3 drop there, it makes removing this bird really, really appealing for the opponent, and really powerful. My little interaction is that they can't roast the birds, which is nice, because they roasted my Noble Hierarch last game. Roast only hits creatures without flying. Yeah, so they do have an abrade. Oh, this is really bad. This is really bad. We are flooding out badly when we just needed some... Uh, two and three drops in this hand to make it really good. Alrighty, so I'm gonna grab myself a stomping ground here. Elroot Evolution, eh? That might have been good earlier. Yeah, and I think I'm just uh, forced to play out my Surak. I don't want a cavern, because I want to save my cavern for the Cremator, which means I want to name Shaman, not Human or Warrior. And yeah, it looks like we're gonna get hit by a Logic Knot, and we still really need to draw another creature, because um, now I need Elroot Evolution to be good, I need to empty my hand, I need to deal some damage to my opponent to actually make my cremator lethal. I was gonna say, any creature's really good, but um, that's really not. I mean, they can't counter it, right? So I suppose I just um, keep my lands in hand and play out the cremator as it is? I'm not really sure if this is good or not. But we've got a chance to dome our opponent for 12, which is good. 
And yeah, that's that, that, that's all right then. I was gonna say if we didn't do that, then hopefully we'd end up hitting a um hitting a land. Now the question is what to name with the uh, cavernousols. We can't quite uh, afford to call to next turn, but we're actually very close. Yeah, I think I can just hold it. I think I can just hold it. All right, file it thicket off the top. All right, so Cremator's gonna connect, which is gonna bring our opponent down to 14. Maybe I should have Wolf Run? Hmm. Um, in any case, I don't want to cast my evolution when they can probably counter it, because that'll leave me with nothing in play. But if they ever tap down, we can 12 them. And if we draw another creature, we're in really good shape, I think. All right, what do we draw? Firelight Thicket again, okay. All right, we're gonna bash again. Opponent's gonna block. Cool. I'm gonna go ahead and green trample and yeah, it's gonna work. So that is really good If I've got the opponent just um, not able to answer this four toughness creature and Chumping we're in super good shape and we do have enough mana to just cast an uncounterable Galta next turn So that's sweet. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and name a uh, dinosaur and just cast an uncounterable Galta, which is not something this deck does very often, but I don't see a world in which we can lose from here. Yeah, opponent's going for a block plus a braid. So that's basically just a one for one trade. Yeah, so the trade happens and now they have to beat Galta and they're on eight and they only play red removal. Basically the opponent's in cryptic command or bust mode. Okay, it's a thing in the ice. Surely they can't flip it. They need four one drops that they could cast in the same turn. So second thing in the ice. All right, all right. Now I get to go to combat bash for 12. We still have Kessiv Wolf run on the board. And yeah, the opponent scoops it up. They know that we've got nine points of trample through double thing on the ice blocking. And that is, um, that was a weird one. We both sort of uh, stumbled a bit, but man, casting a 12-12 trample feels good. Feels good. Alrighty. We have a hand which is not very good at all, but I think I'm going to keep it anyway. It's super fair but on the play, it might be good enough. We just get to kick off turn one with a tapped Temple Garden. Our opponent did Malik into six, which might make this sort of hand a little bit more reasonable. Oh, wow, and the opponent's playing Mill. So this is interesting. Stranglewood Geist is a sweet draw because we're gonna need to get really aggressive really fast to race this deck. As we get in for two, and of course the opponent is gonna take it down to 15. All right, not a fetch land, so the Hedron Crab's not gonna be too devastating here as we do get milled for three. Didn't reveal it. We didn't reveal anything too spicy just yet as a Manic Scrab comes down and it's back to us. So Foothills isn't bad. It means that we can cast the Cremator with a second red source. It also means we can track an next turn and get two clues if we wanna do that. But now I'm definitely gonna get in for two here, although that won't do anything because the opponent has a free block, which they take. But what I am excited about here is this Steel Leaf Champion, which the opponent cannot block and which is a three turn clock on its own. So that's gonna put a lot of pressure on the opponent. Okay, now the Hedron Crab comes down, which is pretty scary. And they do have a land, not a fetch, but still being milled for six is not ideal. <laughs> And there is the first impervious great worm. So I get the feeling the opponent, if they didn't know what's up, they know now. All right, and we draw nothing exciting. I'm gonna go ahead and bash in here. Steel leaf, getting in for five. And I suppose I'm going to tracker and play a fetch line here. Not really sure what's best. The, the cremator does hit harder, although it isn't especially exciting right now. Alrighty, the opponent's getting the land drop, so we're getting milled for six again, but we do still have most of our deck happening right about now. Okay, and we are going to get hit by this field of ruin. Important to note that this will turn on any archive traps the opponent has. Our fetch would have done that anyway, I suppose. But with us taking another six cards being milled here, we would be dead to double archive traps. So hopefully that's not on the horizon here. Okay, Surgical's Lightning Bolt. That's fine. So unless they've got the win in hand, we should be okay here. All right, and the turn's going back to us. Just gonna grab a basic mountain and crack a clue here. It seems pretty unlikely we're getting value out of this cremator trigger here. There's an Eldritch Evolution. Okay, so I don't think it's any way that we can win right here. I'm thinking about this evolution, but I don't think it does anything super exciting for us. We could get like a Serac and uh, attack with a lot of creatures, but they can still block three things. But you know what, I think I'm gonna do that anyway, just to try and make them lose some creatures to hopefully give me a better shot at winning here. So I'll play out my Wolf Run. Eldritch Evolution on the Strangler Geist. 
So he comes back as a 3-2. Oh, and you know what I didn't check? Because they've actually milled the uh, card I was thinking of getting. Okay, so Elder Evolution, what can we actually do here? I think we're best off just getting a Kragenwick Cremator and hoping to discard the one in our hand already. Because if we do, that just wins us the game. So yeah, let's go for it. Alright, opponent's going to draw three in response. Jeez. So we better hope this works. And no, it didn't. Okay. Alright, we get to attack with everything, but we're probably going to be just a little too slow here. Okay, but it makes one block, so they're hoping to crab us out of the game. Uh, we can't get any extra points of damage in here, so unfortunately, we'll have to settle for putting them to two. No bolts now, deck left anyway. And I guess we just have to hope that we're not dead, but I can't see a world in which with the five cards in hand we're not. Oh wow, and that's a that's another Hedron Crab. A single fetch land kills us, and that's a fetch land. All right, well, let's try again, shall we? Alrighty, so for sideboarding here, I'm gonna try to keep on the uh, Kragenwick Cremator plan and uh, leave these guys in. The cards I'm gonna cut are Tyler's Trekker, Scavenging Ooze, and Nullhide Ferox. Ooze seems pretty good out of these, but we definitely don't want to grind. Ferox doesn't seem very handy. And uh, the cards we're bringing in all seem good, right? We're worried about Ensnaring Bridge, so we really need ways to kill that in our deck. And then additionally, a uh, Hellion just as a tutor target seems sweet, because it can, of course, just nuke the opponent's board if they do have a bunch of, you know, scribes and uh, crabs in play. So we're going to try it like this, see how we go, and uh, hope that it turns out better this time. We had a 1 in 3 chance to steal the win last game. Hopefully we can make the odds a little better this time around. Alright, so I've got an opening hand which is very all-in on drawing a land and Magus the Moon working, which I think is just not super likely to be pulled off. We've basically got two dead cards right now, so I'm gonna mulligan. And this hand is not good, but I'm definitely keeping it at this stage, and we do not want a Galter. So you can see the uh, definite drawbacks of playing the uh, discard a 16 or 12 power creature plan. So the opponent's gonna crab. Okay, Birds of Paradise, not what we want here at all. So we do get to bash for three, which is nice. And that's going to connect, of course, and we do get to play the birds. But we're really going to need to draw pretty well from here on out, because we do not want a single mana source for the rest of the game. And we're getting milled for six right off the bat. Oh, wow, the opponent just milled three lands off the first one. And there's a Mesmeric Orb. Ooh, okay. Well, let's yield to those. Ah, uh, more land. Okay. Things are getting a little rough now. As we get to connect 4-3. But with no follow-up play, we're in such a bad spot. Okay, there's Glimpse the Unthinkable. Shelldock Isle. Getting milled some more. So the opponent's going off. And unfortunately, we're just very far from it. We drew another land. So, yeah, I think we're basically dead. We've, we've lost all of our artifact hate in the graveyard. Opponent's about to turn on their, um, opponent's about to turn on their Sheldock Isle as well. Yeah, and they just cast Ancestral Recall here with Visions of Beyond. Alright, Manic Scribe 2. Opponent has Delirium. Yeah, and, uh, these guys are super uncastable, as we can see now. Even with a lot of lands and a bunch of creatures in play, we still can't cast our Great Worm. Would not be able to cast a Galter either from here, so at this point I think we're done. Alright, so another round with the Krangenwick Cremator deck. This is not a hand we can keep, but this looks sweet. Uh, land looks good for this hand. And let's see what the opponent's doing. So we get to go turn to Steel Leaf potentially here. Ooh, Goblin Guide. Okay, well that's going to draw us a card, which is something. And turn to Steel Leaf must be good against Burn, right? Drawing Bolt seems good as well. And now the question is, if they attack into me, am I blocking? And I think the answer's got to be no, right? Because a Searing Blaze would just be really devastating. Okay, it's a Lava Mansa. Rift Bolt. Okay, well they don't- they can't attack now. See, if they uh, played their stuff out post-combat, they probably got a two, uh, free two points of damage there, so happy they didn't. Huh. Things are a little awkward here because I really want to play out my Tireless Tracker before a land, but if I also want a Lightning Bolt, that doesn't work because um, if I play out the Firelight Thicket, it can't make colored mana after I play out a land, if I play out the Stomping Ground, I have to Shock, which I don't want to do against Burn. So I think that means I'm just playing out my Tracker after a land, which feels bad, but that's okay. And yeah, I'm pretty sure the card I want to bolt is the Lava Mansa. You can just shoot down the Tracker for free, which seems like it would be bad for me. Now I get to play out my Tylus Tracker, and just get in for five. 
And we're at a point now in the game where if we draw a Kragenwick Cremator or an Eldritch Evolution at any point, it will just be lethal. Just immediate 16 damage out of nowhere. So he's going to Rift Bolt down my Tireless Tracker, which is sweet, because I'm still at 18 and the opponent's not sending any burn at my face. Okay, there's a Lava Spike. Goblin Guide has to attack. Gives me a Forest. And we draw... Uh, okay, that's where things look a little, a little more sad for us. Because uh, we currently have six mana towards convoking a Great Worm, but six is not really very good. Opponent's getting a tapped Sacred Foundry and Staff. We still have the Kragenwick Cremators are lethal draws. Eldritch Evolution is still lethal. What's on top? Fauna Shaman. Ugh. Uh, at this point, I think I'm pretty keen on chumping with the birds. But we're still on 13, they've got three cards in hand, and they're dead in two to my Steel Leaf, so I think the turn two Steel Leaf might just be good enough. Oh. Okay, that's Searing Blaze. They have double Searing Blaze, that would be a devastating blow. It's a Helix. Alright, okay, turn two Steel Leaf is not gonna be good enough. But... Fauna Shaman, if it lives, can give me a Kragenwick Cremator next turn. Oh boy. Yeah, so I'm not blocking, I'm just gonna take four. They can't kill me from six with one card. Foothills is not a great draw, but I think we have a bolt on top after that, which means I think we just win. Yeah, we've got this. So now I get to go ahead and fetch, grab a mountain, discard a great worm, grab a Kragenwick Cremator, bolt their face, cast Kragenwick Cremator, Oh, this is so good, this is so good. And then hit them for 16? Yes? <laughs> oh my god, Fauna Shaman is so good in this deck. Wowee, that felt great. Um, yeah, alright, we've got two more shots to be burn. Alright, so for sideboarding against burn, I kinda like most of what I'm doing. So, Cremator seems like a really cool way to steal games. Uh, I like the idea of being aggressive and racing them, and I also like the idea of um, playing these sweet sideboard cards. Wall of Reverence seems amazing. Kitchen Finks is obviously good, Scavenging Ooze is obviously good. So I don't think I really want to cut anything else from my deck. I could see, maybe because I'm in the draw, cutting a card like um, Surak and bringing in cards like Slagstorm and Kaledra Hellion to deal 3 damage to all their stuff. Ferox seems like a very, very strong creature. But yeah, I'm just gonna make these three changes and um, we'll, we'll just see how this goes. Um, so this is a hand which looks really sad, but I'm gonna keep it. Because I think that Eldritch Evolution for this wall that we're playing could be like backbreaking. Really was hoping to draw something, something other than my uh, Misty there. Okay, opponent's going to suspend a Rift Bolt, they're going to hit me for one. As so I grab my Stumping Ground. Okay, that's Surak. Well, Surak's not, he, he's, he's probably going to be okay later. Okay, Rift Bolt's going to get my face. There's another Swift Spear. Yikes, okay. And if this is a Searing Blaze, I'm probably just dead. Yeah, it's a Searing Blaze, okay. Well, you know, our draw is probably too fragile in hindsight, because I guess the Searing Blaze basically just beats it. There's another Fauna Shaman. I mean, I guess I keep playing this one out, but we're basically dead to um any combination of cards the Burn deck has at this point. But it's probably true for this deck that we really want to be on the uh, play if we're going to beat Burn. Yeah, and we're just going to be peppered by this... um. Yeah, okay, Path plus Searing Blaze just to get lethal off the prowess. So yeah, we're, we're dead. That was, a, that, was, that was a good Burn hand, and that was a clunky hand from us, but we're definitely not going to make any changes for game three because um, I think I can be on the front foot much more, and uh, maybe I wanted Slagstorm and Heli in there, but it wouldn't have mattered no matter what at that point. Yeah, and this is much, much better. Much better hand. Turn one Dork is scary, I mean it's probably a turn two Geist, and then turn three um, start healing up. So we're going to kick off with a basic forest and play out our Hierarch. Okay, opponent starting off with a Rift Bolt. Cool. So we just get to go ahead and Strangle Root Geist, play out our Stumping Ground tapped, and start racing. Oh, opponent's gonna Rift Bolt our Strangle Root Geist. That is interesting. Yeah, then Searing Blood it. Okay. Well, plans changed. We're not going to get a wall in this turn. We're instead just going to play out a Nullhide Ferox, because our opponent is very clearly putting themselves in the defensive. And this Ferox with a Hierarch in play is a two-turn clock. 
Very possible that at this point I'm just gonna end up getting a Finx, not my wall, but we'll see. There's an Eidolon. Okay, and a Temple Garden. It's gonna go straight to combat. Yeah, the opponent's just gonna chump. Yeah, it turns out I am gonna get my wall, because I think the wall is just unbeatable. So I get to go Fauna Shaman. We get to go... Oh, yes, of course! Ferox means I can't actually uh, play the evolution without paying two mana to the Ferox ability first. So next turn we get a wall, and our opponent's still got nothing going for them. And we're threatening seven damage every turn. So opponent's in a really rough spot. Fauna <laughs> Shaman down. And there's another Eidolon. Okay, let's see if that one's on chump duty as well. Impervious Great Worm. Hello. Uh, that's going to be a lethal um, Krakenwick Cremator, by the way. I'm just going to get in for my seven first. And the opponent's going to take it. But now I just get to go ahead and activate the Ferox ability. Play out a tapped Temple Garden. And finish off my opponent by, yeah, sacrificing the Ferox. Grabbing a Kragenwick Cremator and doming my opponent for 16. So really sweet way to beat Burn. Wrapping up the 4-1 very nicely. And let's go to some wrap-up, shall we? All right, so wrapping up Kragenwick Cremator in Modern. So we had a very sad mill match, which is our only loss. But other than that, in our league, we just went 4-1 and kind of crushed it, right? So we... Stomped Burn and a bunch of fair and control decks, and everything just worked a lot better than I thought it would. So basically, the uh, fair plan, which I thought was going to be the only part of the deck that was good, is um, it's really good, right? So Geists with Lightning Bolts and Steel Leaf Champions, and, you know, potential for Eldritch Evolution into something aggressive like a Serac. Like, that's a really good way to just close out a game and win. You really want to be proactive in this format. But Eldritch Evolution lets you interact in whatever way you need to, whether it be with land, uh, whether it be with the graveyard, whether it be with whatever else. And then the Cremator plan was really sweet because the fact that we often have our opponent on the back foot with our early pressure usually gives us time to just sort of like sit back on these Cremators and then just kill the opponent out of nowhere with them. So I thought that the Cremators would be way too clunky most of the time. And like we saw games where they were, right? We saw games where this seemed like a really bad card. Uh, I probably didn't play it right, maybe I should be more patient with them, but we saw games where the Cremators didn't look great, and where these uh, big creatures didn't look great, but that seemed to be a pretty small percentage of the time, and we'd very often be able to get through those awkward games anyway, just because we had a bunch of powerful aggressive cards in our deck. So, overall, I was just really happy with how things ran, and... The deck was really fun, so it was everything I hoped it would be, and I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Man, that was great. See you guys.